I decided to talk about this topic because I think it's really, really important. And I feel that um, it's time for us to discuss these kinds of things, which are difficult topics, controversial topics that um, in my own personal experience, I have had to hide within my life and suppress that information with fear of being ridiculed or thought that there was something wrong with me or maybe I was, um, you know, not right in my mind for thinking that these things occurred to me. However, um, abduction is something that is very real and thousands of people around the world are experiencing these kinds of experiences. And it isn't until we speak out about it that we can allow people to feel safe enough to share their experiences. And my hope is that through these experiences that we are sharing with each other, that we learn and understand even more on a greater scale what is occurring around us. I think that it's a really important time right now in the universe, in our reality, here on, on with our life and our planet, for us to talk about these difficult topics that we have a difficulty seeing. What I have learned around along my journey is that anything that we can imagine and manifest is true on some level because we live in a multidimensional reality. However, I'm going to talk to you about a re very real experience that happened to me and I'm going to go into detail that way you can understand how this experience has impacted my life and how it impacts other people. And it wasn't until, um, well, this happened to me in 2013, but it wasn't until 2017, this year, that I come out open about these experiences that occurred to me. I never before felt safe, and I guess I, I was never clear about my message when it came to these things. I don't want it to seem like something that I, a story that I give off for people to feel that I am romanticizing this topic or creating some kind of fantasy creation around it or something to, uh, uh, you know, get my name out there. For me, this is a very difficult and very important message to be able to give out to everyone out there who has ever experienced something that isn't let's say within a paranormal or within something that is out of the guidelines of the norm. And abduction is now becoming something that more and more people are talking about, very real experiences. And as I'm telling you, as I have come out with this information to more and more people, the more people I talk to, the more I find that they actually have ex experiences such as this themselves. And I'm finding that maybe this really isn't something so uncommon. So why do we have such a hard time talking about it? Why is it something that's taboo that we don't want to share with other people because we're afraid of their judgment? So my hope is two things. Number one, I'm going to explain my story to you so you can understand what I have gone through in my personal life, how it's helped me, and why I choose to share it with you. There's many reasons for that. Number two, as a spiritual uh, guide or as an ascension coach, which is what I do, I'm a meditation teacher, I'm an intuitive pranic healer, and I work one-on-one -on -one with people to assist them in creating a disciplined practice with meditation, a disciplined practice connection with themselves, as well as ascension. So when you are breaking the layers of your own understanding in your life, and you're ready to go to the next step with your own spiritual practice. So what I found through my journey and through my discoveries is that as we are peeling the layers of an onion, of information, of knowledge, we, we seem to go through that many times before we really comprehend what's occurring around us. And it's a necessary process to understanding the many levels of reality that we're dealing with. Because we have so many, we, we have so many de dimensions to ourselves. I mean, we have our emotional body, our physical body, our, you know, our nervous system, our ethereal body. There's so many different aspects to ourselves that are necessary to be conscious of when we are interacting in the world around us that in the same way, information has different layers within those levels. So it's really important for us to share this information now so that we can get in touch with the people that are also experiencing these things. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right into my story. 
um, October 2013, I was sleeping in my bedroom and um, at 3.33, exactly 3.33 in the morning, I wake up and I am awoken by a light, a tremendous amount of light that comes into my room. Now my room, my bed was facing the window and as I'm facing this window, I'm seeing this light soaking into the room and it's so bright that I actually immediately become really upset because my first thought is, who is shining this light into my room and how can they be so inconsiderate to be shining it at this time in the morning? And I couldn't sleep. So I get out of my bed. It literally, I try to ignore it, but I, I, I get out of my bed and I walk to my window and I'm looking through the mini blinds. I open my mini blinds to see who is shining this light. So beyond the light to see if I can find a car or whatever is shining their light straight at my window. And the way that my street is is made it's kind of like a little bit of a curve so I thought that maybe a car was coming but in order for them to hit my window at that angle directly into my window they would literally have to stop in the middle of the road and shine their light really brightly so that's why it kind of scared me and it was kind of alarming at that time to wake up to this so next thing I do is I look through the blinds as I'm looking in outside my window as I'm looking beyond the light I'm trying to see if I can find the formation of of a car or something but instead I see just metal metal of some sort so I was confused and I wasn't sure how close or far it was because the light was so bright it was it just it became brighter and brighter as I'm looking at this light so it blinded me and I'm squinting and I can't quite see beyond what I'm looking at so at that point when the light became even brighter the next thing I see is shadows walking in from this light so six shadows walking towards me very tall slender shadows and as these beings approach me i am seeing the outline of their faces the outline of their bodies coming closer to me and one of those beings comes up closer to me and it was a gray alien a tall gray alien and he was about 10 to 11 feet tall he comes closer to me and approaches my body and I am terrified I mean I really I don't know how to what to do at that point I'm shocked and I go into terror my body begins to shake and I want to scream and the next thing I notice is that my entire body is paralyzed and I cannot move so as I'm next to this window, this gray alien standing next to me, and as I look up at him, because he's quite tall, he is basically speaking to me in a telepathic form, telling me to calm down, to relax. And immediately, he, he somehow removes my emotions out of my body. And as I'm physically paralyzed, now I am emotionally paralyzed. So I cannot feel or scream or yell or move. And he brings me up through the window with him next to me into this light, into the remainder of these, of these uh, group of, of aliens. And as I am being pulled through the window, I want to express what a, um, it's a painful experience physically to be pulled through this mass what is occurring and what they're doing is basically changing your vibration so that you can move through the mass of the wall of the window even though you are paralyzed and numb you can still feel it almost feels like you are being pulled through something or pulled apart and as I'm showing up on the other side of my window, I'm just sucked into this light, into the ship where I am seeing these grays and the gray that is next to me. So as I'm approaching the inside of the ship, I'm seeing them all file in and I see immediately the bottom of the ship which I can see kind of like a railing floor. And uh, on the back side of the ship, I'm seeing like a paneling, like a sectional paneling, uh, a smoother paneling of metal, and then a metallic, like a railing metal, and some buttons or some sort of uh, uh, metal formulations on the side of the, of the wall on the inside of this ship. And what I remember very clearly is seeing a tremendous amount of light from everywhere 
and I guess I wasn't, I couldn't focus exactly on what was occurring other than being what was directly in front of me. And I, I think that's because I was paralyzed. But as this being is next to me, pulling me into the ship, I'm walking inside of this metal railing floor. And the next thing I see him do is wave his hand and everything around me shifts. And the next thing I know, I am inside this kind of a holographic um, 3D uh, reality of, of a grassy place with these long obtuse buildings. As I'm coming into this grassy area and I'm seeing these obtuse buildings, I notice that everything looks very fake. The sky is very blue. The grass is very green very perfect. It, it looks almost like that fake grass carpeting. And I can see the obtuse building is very beautiful, clean, modern design. And I'm walking towards this building and there are steps. So I'm walking and next thing I realize that I'm no longer accompanied by this being, this gray alien. And as I walk up these steps, I notice that this beautiful structure, this obtuse building, has uh, some kind of a grassy, some kind of a, a Japanese style garden to the far back and a glass table to the left of me and to the right of me, it's some kind of like a lower level seating space. So as I'm walking here, I mean, I'm looking at things around me and I turn around to see where I just came from to see if there was anyone with me because at that point I felt alone. And what I'm noticing is that I see three beings walking where I just walked from, like crossing in front of the space that I just walked in from. And I see two gray aliens and a family member, okay? And when I see her, and I will talk about that, um, because she has actually undergone the hypnosis as well and has experienced this. And one thing that I want to mention is that a lot of these abductions are done within lineages of bloodline. So within a family, if you are a female that that is undergoing with a hybrid, hybridization program, more than likely your family members will also have gone through. But that doesn't happen in all the cases, but in the majority of the cases, and I will talk about that in another video. Um, but as I'm seeing her walking, I begin to panic because the first thing that comes to mind is like, oh my gosh, uh, I know her. And if the thought of her being there as well was very confusing and alarming. And I begin to panic and I feel this anxiety in my stomach and I want to scream again. And the next thing I know, this image of everything around me, the house, the green grass, the blue sky, all of this fake imagery around me disappears. And I am in front of this inside of the ship. So basically what had happened and what they do is they change the image of the ship, almost like creating an image, a holographic image around you to shift what you're looking at. But you are still within the ship. They just have the ability of creating holograms, I guess, uh, around you, like a 3D projection around you that is very real. And at the same time, this particular projection was very, very, it looked very fake, very manicured car, you know, grass with the blue sky, very fake. It looks like a set of a movie or something like that. So as I'm looking now inside of the ship, this very, very real ship, this doesn't look like a, a fake uh, simulation of any kind. Um, I am looking in front of me. I see three grays in front of me and a taller gray next to me, the same gray that brought me into the ship to begin with, walks next to me and to the right of me, I can see a table with a blue hologram and on the hologram, it seems that there are planets, stars. It looks like a little mini galaxy within the blue lighting. And it looks like this is like their navigation of some sort on top of this blue table. Beyond that, I can see their windows and see outside into the stars from the ship and like their controls, their con whatever their controls are behind that space. And the flooring is kind of like a railing underneath you. To the right of me, I'm seeing the ship and what looks like a translucent material, like a metallic ship that is now see-through. 
and I can see the stars beyond that. So I'm seeing the gray aliens in front of me, their navigation station here, and to the left of me, I'm seeing the stars beyond the ship, which means that this ship actually, um, you know, it's see-through. So I can see, it's almost like a translucent material. Um, it's very beautiful, very, very, very elegant design. Is I, I am very much a design person, a visual. I mean, I went to school for interior and architectural design. So I've studied architecture and looking at this kind of structure and this architecture, it is just magnificently clean and minimalistic and just, it just all connects very beautifully. Um, and of course they manage, everything is vibration. It's almost like a vib vibratory substance that we are in here. So as, as I'm absorbing all of this, the alien, of course, this happens a lot quicker. I'm explaining what, what occurred in more detail. But he comes next to me and he shows me before me, before us, a cubic box of light. Very thin boxes. They look like LED blue lighting. But this is a beautiful holographic uh, imagery that he's showing me like a 3d projection nothing like you've ever seen here on the planet it is so beautiful and clean and real it's almost as if you can touch it but it's a it's a hologram of some sort so as he's showing me these cubic boxes like a stack of like eight boxes and the first one spans around us and it's like a book and it it's almost as if I'm coming closer to this book. And as I'm looking at the pages, they are being filled up with writing, with, with alien writing, with this incredible language, page by page, I'm watching it fill up. And as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have to remember this. I have to take a picture with my mind. And I'm trying to remember and capture as many symbols as I possibly can, but these symbols are so complex. What I did understand from it is that it's a very mathematical language, which means that they express themselves in infinities. And I wish there was some way that I can explain it to you, but the way that they write, it's, it's, it's a, a combination of physics and math and a very expansive conceptualization of everything at once as they are sharing concepts with you instead of just words and, and lines. And, you know, it's more like thought form, very complete and complex thought forms. And that's what I gathered from here. Um, I was able to remember a certain sequence of images, which I, I made myself remember this incredible sequence of, of uh, writing. And... I'm, I'll show a picture here. For you to see. As I'm looking at this writing, um, you know, I notice symbols like the infinity symbol. I can see pi symbol. I can see these circular symbols. And one that caught my eye more than anything was a symbol that I used to make for my name since I was a child. Okay, and I will go into that later. But anyway, um, th it was just magnificent to be able to see this, to experience this, these writings in front of me. So anyway, after that, they closed the book and it just disappeared. And then the next cubic box came up. And the next box that comes up is a box with uh, planets. <laughs> And this, these planets expand around me as they blow up this holographic um, travel through the universe as they're taking me on. And as I'm looking at these beautiful planets, they zoom in on the Pleiadian cluster of seven stars. As you know, they're called the Seven Sisters. And directly taking me up to the right and up into the center to the planet Maya, which I found later was the planet Maya. As they are expanding this planet around me, it's almost as if I'm there now and I can see the beautiful planet and I made a drawing of that for you to see exactly what I saw. 
um, you know, it just looks like a regular, beautiful, natural landscape. But the incredible thing that I saw was the civilization there of beautifully advanced people. Um, they are Nordic types, different types of people, but very advanced, energetically and vibrational people. And what they explained to me, all they said was, this is where you're from. And you were a leader here and you used to teach here. And you made the decision to come to Earth from here. And the next thing that they show me was myself on a mountain teaching and speaking to a crowd of thousands of people. Okay. So apparently there was some something that I was teaching them regarding uh, this reality that I'm doing right now. And as I am leaving this image, it just shrinks back into the box. They pop up another box and the, set, the third box underneath that, I can see little yellow lights. And I'm looking at these lights. I wasn't sure what it was. I was trying to make it out. And as it comes up closer to me, it expands around me and I see they expand and I can see the lights coming closer and it was a being. It was a young boy, the young boy, beautiful young boy with big, beautiful blue eyes and blonde hair, um, you know, short stature. He was a young child that comes close to me and immediately I feel like this strange recognition with him. And from his end, he looks at me and it's almost as I feel so naked and so transparent. I feel like he is seeing everything about me since the very beginning of time. I, I don't know how to express how um, open and raw I felt at that point. But this being comes next to me and the emotion that I begin to feel as if I recognize him, but I wasn't, I mean, I, I couldn't, you know, calculate or comprehend in my mind who this person could be because I didn't recognize him on earth. I never saw him, but this feeling of complete love and emotion. And the next thing I am hearing this information, them talking to me because they speak telepathically. So everything comes into the mind. He says, these are your children. This is your child. And as he says that, I mean, I'm shocked, I'm appalled, and I, I don't know what to feel at that point. But I, I see the child, I, I didn't even begin to think about the whole concept of how the child came to be. I wasn't even there yet. All I knew is that they're telling me that I'm a mother, and I'm captivated by this beautiful child. So um, I gravitate towards the child, and I come closer to him, and... I just feel like this unbelievable connection and love to being told that he was my child and he reciprocates this love and I'm not a mother here on this planet so I don't know what it feels like to be a mother. I can only imagine the love and the connection that you feel as a mother but seeing this child and feeling that overwhelming love I come close to the child and, and it's almost as if we exchange thoughts and, you know, I, I was thinking in my mind, gosh, I don't want to be separated from this being. Is this my child? If this is my child, why would you separate me from him? You know, I, I want to love him. I want to take care of him as a, as a mother instinct would obviously fall into. So I, I went into that mindset and I started to feel a little bit attached to this child as they are talking to me and well the way they they talk is is through thought so what they were expressing to me was love beyond him was another being that that was i'm going to say around 26 years old another beautiful being but he was very different and he had a more reptilian type eyes so very complex pupils that are green different shades of blues and green and um, almost like a reptilian type and his skin was very thin so was the other one it was a very thin and i'll have pictures of that up for you but um almost like a reptilian i want to say a scaly type of material like a grayish skin 
lighter, more translucent, and then gray eyes and brown hair, not a lot of hair, uh, just strange hair. I, I couldn't explain it to you, but um, I drew a picture of him the best that I could from my memory. And I'm seeing a beautiful being. And as I'm seeing him, you know, again, I feel this overwhelming feeling. I mean, and knowing that you have all these children and no idea where they came from or how they originated. The next thing I see is a glimpse of a, of a, of a woman, child, oh, not a woman, a, a young girl, beautiful brown hair, um, her beautiful gigantic eyes, again, very translucent skin, smaller mouth, smaller nose, but very big eyes, not like our eyes, much bigger, like almost to fit within the cavity of the bone, the bone cavity that would have been filled with pupil is what it what it looked like what it you know what it would be if we would to see them here um so as i'm seeing these magnificent beings in front of me i'm being pulled away because my emotions are just all over the place and these these uh, beings they don't want you to feel emotions so they immediately want to remove you from any feelings of emotions right away so as we take that out of the, of the body, he immediately removes it and brings me back into the room and the image of these people, of the, these essences or these hologramic pro projections of these beings disappear. And um, again, I'm brought in front of that blue box where he says, why are you suffering? And... They don't understand emotions. They don't understand the complexity of emotions and the range. I guess we flow through these emotions so quickly. It's true, right? We, we connect with something. Our mind moves to another thing. And it's like we flow through all of these different concepts and, and combine them, which is, which is one of our powerful tools that we have. Um, but he brings me back into the room. And I'm looking at the next box that pops up. And, and he shows me my, the planet Earth. And he says, why are you suffering? Don't you understand how everything works? And, and uh, the answer is no to that question. But he zooms into the planet. And the next thing I see is a beautiful field of flowers. And as I'm looking closer, it's almost as he zoomed in closer to the flowers. It's almost as if I can see the lines of those flowers with numbers, ones and zeros, they're not, it's not an actual flower. He sees, he tells me everything is an illusion. And as I'm coming closer to this, I now look at the other side of this image that he's showing me and everything is ones and zeros that looks like a net, a net of ones and zeros, very small. Okay, so basically he's showing me that this is, it's literally like the movie, The Matrix, but I'm seeing it, it doesn't look like what The Matrix showed you, it looks like ones and zeros within a net, and everything has this net, and he zooms out of that garden, uh, or land of uh, grass, and he shows me people, people on the street, he shows me my family, he shows me my home, and everything around me, and everything looks like this network of ones and zeros, even myself. And basically what that was is to explain to me that we are all one. We're all made out of the exact same thing. We're all within this same illusion, within this matrix creation. And the only thing that's real is our souls. Okay, and I saw the, the, the human beings within that network, everything was net, was network, the people, everything around them, the buildings was all the same. The only thing different was the soul, okay? The soul of the body. And I saw them connecting up towards something. So it was magnificent to experience because for the first time in my life, I understood what it was to be inside of a matrix. As I'm looking, he pulls me back into this room uh, from that incredible experience and from there he shows me everything around me changes okay and he shows me a nebula and the reason why I have a nebula which I I purchased after this experience this nebula that you see above me I am surrounded by this rainbow nebula okay 
and for the first time I'm seeing the planet Earth and he communicates to me, telling me, you are all one. No separation, no matter who you're with or what you've experienced in your life, you are all part of a whole. You are here to raise the vibration, to connect with Source. Okay, and at that time, those words did not have the meaning that they have for me now. Everything that I've gone through, after all, my learning, my transformation, my awakening to this knowledge. But as he says that to me, I feel deep inside me, remember the memory of my family, my friends, everything. And for the first time in my life, it's like I'm looking at planet Earth below me and all of those families, everything. And I am here within this nebula floating in space. And I feel completely liberated from the physical body, from the heavy emotions, from connection to my family, with all my worries, my stress, my anxieties, whatever uh, priorities I have in life, work, struggles, all of that disappears. And now I am just an essence floating in the universe as part of this whole, okay? And this experience, was the most beautiful, peaceful experience you can ever imagine. You, here on this planet, have I ever experienced this uh, all-inclusive feeling of unconditional love, freedom from emotions, from connections, from family, from everything that we know to be true here within this reality. Feeling that liberation was such a healing experience. And, um, that brings me back after that to my room and the next thing i know is i am lying upside down facing the end of my bed and you know i i don't even i don't know what to feel at that point i look around me and that experience has changed my life i have kept this experience within me since 2013 I've told my parents and I've told my partner at the time, but it was something that was very hard to tell. And when I told, you know, it wasn't any, any immediately welcomed. And at that point, it makes you kind of check yourself and say, okay, what am I talking about here? Do I want to talk about this? What does that mean? What does that make me look like? You know, all these insecurities enter your mind about what you're talking about here. And it's a really, really big thing. It's a really important thing that I have kept within me. And I knew that it was important, but I, you know, within my past relationship, I thought many times I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this because this is huge. This is so important. We need to talk to people about this. Who else is experiencing this? Who else has had children uh, hybrid children and after that I started to research so much and to look into this and it wasn't until literally this year that I start to realize and connect with people women and men around the world that have had these experiences and open my eyes to how how common this actually is but we're not talking about it so this is the beginning of a very long journey I because of all these experiences and because of the a slight trauma that occurred to me when you know my partner says don't talk about that you know don't say that you're gonna look like a crazy person you're gonna ruin your life your reputation at the time i had a business and and you're gonna ruin everything around you and you know the truth is that these kinds of experiences are really the most powerful life-shifting experiences and i think it's important that we find the strength within us to talk about these things so that we can understand what's happening on a grander scale because if these things are really happening to us what does that mean for the world what does that mean for us who are we that these people are trying to create children with who are we that we are being com communicated and connected by these uh, extraterrestrials? Who are we that we have found so much information about our ancient history with alien races and alien connection? You know, in our history, in our education, modern day education, you will not find a drop of this information anywhere, okay? 
And it is not that there isn't substantial research and documentation and information out there, because it is out there. It's that it's controversial and frightening, and it takes us out from our security home base of knowing that everything is so safe within our reality and that these things are so beyond our comprehension. We cannot, you know, maybe comprehend it within our everyday reality, but it is there, it is happening. And it's really up to us to do the work, to investigate and to find and to explore what is actually occurring around us. Because nobody is going to give us this information on a silver platter for us to understand it. We really have to experience these truths for ourselves. You know, I think up until this time in, in, in our reality, we are used to being fed information, processing that information and compartmentalizing it depending on how we feel it affects us. But we never question the source of this information. We never question our history. We never question what really happened. And as you grow older, you know, from your childhood education, you realize that some history that's out there is not even real. It's not even legitimate. It's not, it's not all truth. A lot of it has been skewed, changed. Why are we being fed this particular history specifically in the order that we receive it? I mean, all the children in the U.S. receive this certain specific information, cookie cutter history. Okay, what are other countries studying? What is occurring? What is really happening with our system, with our educational system? What's really happening with our food system? What's really happening in our government? What's really happening? I think it's really, really important to ask these questions, especially now. And, you know, we're doing it now because we didn't do it before, but now it's the time to ask these questions and to dig up the information. So from this experience that I'm sharing with you, I invite you to start doing the research, to start looking into what is occurring around you, to ask the questions, to see if this reality, these uh, extraterrestrials and alien contact can be real for you. You have to do your own research. You have to experience and understand how you feel in relationship to that. Okay, I would never impose my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions on anyone because number one, these experiences are very personal. Number two, the way you process this information is going to depend on what you have learned up until all your knowledge, you know, all of that makes up your perception. So, Anyway, I share this story with you, and um, I really hope that, you know, this inspires people that have experienced abductions, that have experienced contacts, even people that have, have been uh, abducted with different organizations within, within our planet, like my lab, or any kind of abductions of that sort, come out and speak about it. Because now that I have been more integrated in this, for me to find this to be true, I had to go through a process of, of comprehension. And that led me to get my uh, hypnosis session to see if that really happened. Like, am I making this up? Did I dream it up? What happened? And I needed to have that confirmation because, you know, I'm a person that I really want things to be real in my life. I don't want to live off fantasies and things that aren't real. So... I needed that confirmation to understand where I was at with that reality. So I went in to do my hypnosis session and I found out a lot of incredible things about myself, about my experience and the history beyond that experience. And I'm going to be sharing my hypnosis sessions part by part with you, sharing every aspect of what I've learned, explaining the information that I have received any information that I have channeled through that and going deep into the hybridization program that we're dealing here with on the planet, which is a huge topic that we have to pay attention to because we're talking about our families, our mothers, our sisters, our aunts, our cousins, our, you know, myself, other women around the world that have experienced these hybrid children and implants, that have experienced insemination, that have experienced having children removed for them. These are traumatic, real issues that we need to start talking about because thousands of women around the world and men experience this, okay? 
and if you have a memory from childhood or a dream about these things are very much tellers that can help you understand your full story. They have helped me and I will explain how. Now as all my truths are coming out through all hypnosis sessions, those memories that are ingrained in my mind are there for a reason. The very first abduction that I had, I remember being in my parents' room. And I'm going to go into that. Uh, um, every single one of my abductions, which I have received uh, information from the hypnosis session, I was able to go back to exactly what happened. Um, so I will go into that um, in, a, in a next video when I talk about the hybridization program. So thank you so much for your time. And um, please be mindful of, of this information that I share with you. This isn't easy for me to come out and talk about these things with you. Uh, I understand that it's very controversial. I understand that people may not be ready to hear these things, may not be ready to accept them. And for those of you that are not, I, I invite you to listen, at least listen, and then move on if it's not for you. But I also know that there are a lot of people that have a feeling that these things are true and that have experienced it and maybe seen things that they put to the back of their mind because they can't find the confirmation out there. So this information is for you and for the people that want to learn about these, these issues that are very real for women, for men, the hybridization program, abductions. People that have experienced this, you know, let's talk about it. My name is Geraldine Orozco. And I am here um, to assist in any way that I can. I'm an intuitive pranic healer and ascension coach. And uh, my website is below. You're welcome to check out my website if you need, if you have any questions. Uh, I am here, happy to serve. Okay, all my love, and uh, I wish you an incredible day.